started. It takes me quite a push sometimes, hopefully not as much as everybody else, but certainly more than some. As a child, I had all the opportunities to do random things in the, on my weekends, on my time off. I could go to the park, I could go surfing, I could go skateboarding, I could go to the beach. I had an opportunity that not many people get. I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time on the water. I got to go sailing with my grandfather, and after I did that, my uncle started taking me out on his boat. We had lots of fun times. He saw I really enjoyed it, so he started taking me out for a race committee. And I would go and set up these sailboat races for huge groups of sailboats, hundreds of sailboats lining up in a mile, a starting line two miles long. And as a little kid, he put me on the bow deck, and he's like, here, do the flags, lift the flags up and down, start the race. Awesome. So I would sit there and, and start races. And one weekend, I'm, I'm out there not paying attention. This is, this is just a weekend for fun. Well, well, these hundred boats are spending thousands, millions of dollars to come out to the race. And I'm, I'm over here unconsciously doing flags at 10, 11 years old. And I pull up two flags to start the race. And I pulled up the wrong flags. And everybody, 100 boats start. And half of them like immediately have to like, look over at me. And they turn around and go back to the starting line. Like people are like, the race committee is looking around and they realize the flags are up wrong. A couple of people start shouting, people are on the radio. And they come and look at me and they're like, yo, he really botched that. <laughs> so my uncle comes over to me and he's like, look, you, you see what she did there? I was like, yeah, these two flags, right? He's like, no, 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 those two flags, this one and the other one. I got it wrong. It cost everybody the race. He showed me the right way to do it. After that, every time I've done flags since then, I've got it right. After I did that, he put me onto other positions. I mean, I excelled at flags with one mistake for someone who's 10 years old, not a problem. He put me onto other positions. I got to do mark boats and set the, the windward mark. I got to move, the, record the starting line, and call people over early. And everything was done perfectly on these race courses. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to set a windward mark, and when the wind shifts, we'll go around it anyway. We want to have the mark upwind the whole time to make a fair race so that everybody gets a, an honest competition. These are upper echelon sailors that are sometimes qualifying for the Olympic races. And they're all flocking to Miami to utilize this, this high-end race committee. It was fantastic. And I was I didn't didn't see it then as much as I see it now, knowing like how important doing it right was. Like the right way to raise the flags, the right way to set the mark, having having the starting line square to the wind every time. It made it made the sailing much better for the competitors. Everybody who was racing would come up after, and they'd all congratulate my uncle. He'd be like, oh, Dave, that was amazing, great coursework. I, we didn't see the wind shift until halfway up the course, and then we're all sailing to the mark that he had already set for shifting wind. It was, it was really phenomenal, like, seeing these people congratulate me. And after working on the water, I started working on other race committees. So people were like, oh, we have another race. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this one. I'd go out to the other races, and they'd be like, oh, set that one in the morning. We'll pick it up in the evening. Don't worry about it. So there'd be sailors, sailings, and these weren't serious sailors as much. They'd be like doing a parade. Nobody's passing each other. Everybody's having a boring race, drinking beers on the water. I mean, it's a, a nice day out, but it wasn't, it wasn't competition. It wasn't perfect. It was, it was sloppy or lazy. The guy'd be sitting there like trying to call boats over early, and they're like, no, 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 just, just let them go. Nobody's coming back for this one. So the integrity of these races really like like showed me, and I've stopped doing the, the lazy races since then, but it's the integrity that he showed me that was really worth doing. He travels all over the world doing these races. So when integrity comes around again, my first car, I said, oh, I got a car, I'm gonna start driving. Fixed it up with my friend, we got everything working, the car ran, for the most part. We got out there and uh, my alternator exploded. I had my girlfriend and her buddies in the car. We're going out for like an afternoon cruise. And uh, that, that really like, kind of wrecked my day. So I was like, look, I'm not going to do this the lazy way. I'm going to sit down and do it right. Called my uncle, set up a weekend. We fixed the alternator, fixed the spark plugs, redid the radios, fixed everything the right way. Not so it worked, so that the car was really like fit to run. And when I needed these things to run, they would be there. The car still runs perfectly well. My sister uses the car and it's, it's phenomenal. The radio is still good, all those speakers are good, and it's really this integrity that he showed me, showing us how to do it the right way so that we wouldn't 
things wouldn't fail when I when I needed them most, so that when we're doing a race for the Olympic qualifying crowd, we're not getting, oh, this guy saw a wind shift that nobody else noticed. Or so when I have my girlfriend in the car, I'm not driving halfway to Fort Lauderdale and having to call a tow truck. So it's my uncle really, really impressed me with, with getting this, getting to do it right. And it really, really worked for me.